Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie and to... Hi, Calcifer. He likes a grand entrance. Let's move the little cute bum. Here, let's put him right here. Okay. There we go. There. If Calcifer is going to be in the video, he has to be held close so he's not right in front of my face. Now he's got to go get his brother. Okay. Take two. Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today we're going to talk a little bit about transitioning over from our summer crops and our fall crops to winter crops. And yes, I did say winter crops. We're starting to think about that now. Now my summer crops, I'm going to be tearing those out. So this is gonna be a two-part video. Today we're going to tear out some of the winter crops. We're going to show you what I'm gonna be planting in the next video. And I'm gonna show you what's happening to my fall crops and it's really kind of sad and devastating. But anyway, let's start out and show you my grow room. Now I do have a grow room and I grew a ton of veggies in it last year. I harvested kale and chichimisa, chard, tomatoes, all sorts of stuff out of here last year. And this year I want to do the same thing. I have not started those seeds yet, but I'm gonna be doing that shortly in another video. But I wanted to show you what I do have in here now. So let's look at it and we'll discuss what my grow room is all about. Now this is my grow room. I do have a camera stand for when I film things in the winter. So this is where I'm growing my succulents. I will probably, and sorry about the striped effect from the lights, but I'm gonna be doing probably some succulent videos this winter. I've learned a lot and I'm actually loving growing them. I've got my watering station down here. I'm going to be starting some fig tree cuttings here shortly and also some pawpaw seedlings. And this is where my citrus and my avocado is gonna be going. So I've got some taller areas with grow lights. The grow lights are in the back. Got our hydroponic units that will start up a little bit later this year. That's an arrow garden over there. And I usually have the fan going, but it's too loud. So this fan is on a timer. Everything is on a timer. This is my new rack system. I needed another area that was taller so I can grow taller vegetables. We're gonna put some tomatoes down here. This is where I'm drying my paprika. We have several more out in the garden ready to harvest and I've got to put up the grow lights for those. And then these are the plants that are going to be going outside in the next video. These are my winter cabbages and kohlrabi. They're huge. I've got them in gallon pots and I wanted them to get some size before we put them outside. Now I don't have room out there right now and that's what this video is going to be about today. We're going to make room for the winter garden. These are all going to go under hoops and grow that way. More cabbages. Here's the chijimisai that'll go outside. We'll have a couple of those inside. And then these are some bunching onions that I'll probably try and grow inside. Here we have the Swiss chard and the kale that's been ready to go outside for a while now. So a few of these will be grown indoors and then most of the rest of these will go outdoors for the winter. And then there's my seed starting mat for when it's time to start seeds. So this is just the overview of my grow room. This used to be my son's bedroom. As soon as he was old enough to move out, he did move out and I moved in. And I've really enjoyed it. Before we head outside, I wanted to kind of show you the reasoning behind what's gonna happen in my garden today. It's the second week in September. We've got probably another four weeks before our first heavy frost, maybe a little bit less and the vegetables are producing gangbusters. Now you saw the amount of paprika that's in my drying on my racks in my grow room. So we have all the paprika that I'm gonna need for this year. Here's Calcifer trying to make a second debut. We've dried tons of fruit, made fruit puree and jams and jellies, and we've still got a ton of fruit coming through. We've still got to harvest the apples. Right here we have six jars of tomato sauce. This will make another six jars of tomato sauce, which will be 12 pints, which is plenty for a year for me because I don't use it that often. We've got about six bags of roasted and pureed veggies and tomatoes in the freezer for soup base. 
we've got this left over. We've got 12 quarts of salsa plus whatever was left over from last year. And we've got 12 pints of ketchup, which is plenty for me for a year. So we're going to be tearing out some heavily producing produce out of my garden. And I wanted to show you pretty much why we're doing that. Now it's getting later in the evening and I don't have a ton of time to get this project done. So what I'm going to do is give you a quick tour of the garden first, show you what we're going to be taking out, tell you why I'm going to be taking things out. And then I'm just going to do, you know, maybe not even on video. I'm going to tear everything out that's going to come out. And then the next video we get, we do, we'll be planting the cabbage and figuring out where I'm going to be putting my winter gardens. Now I grow over the winter in hoop houses because I'm in Utah zone six slash seven. Sometimes we actually get zone five winters. So I do have double hoop houses that are shorter that go over my garden beds and they seem to work pretty well for the cabbages and the kohlrabi. And we'll do a video. And like I said, the next video we do, will show you how we're going to put those together. But let me show you what's happening in the garden right now. This is the south side of my garden. I've got my cute little passion fruit that's not flowering right now that I'm going to need to trellis better next year that is also not producing much fruit. We've got one fruit on that. But in front of that beautiful passion fruit, we've got the first bed that's going to be torn out. Now we've got a ton of paste tomatoes. Most of these are just paste tomatoes. We've also got my little orb web spider there. We've got some We've got some sun sugar tomatoes and we've got our pepita squash that are ready to harvest. So I'm going to harvest the pepita squash, tear those out and tear out the tomatoes because as I showed you and talked about inside, we have plenty of tomatoes. I'm not going to harvest, I'm not going to tear out all of my tomatoes, but this entire bed is going to come out and we're going to use this one as a trial for a winter garden. Now the reason I want to try and use this as a winter garden is, is on the south side of my house and it's going to stay warmer than any other area. If it works out well, then the second bed over here will also be one of my winter beds. But this is in sweet potatoes right now and they are not ready to harvest and they won't be ready to harvest for another several weeks. And I do want to get my winter crops put in ground so they have time to root in before it gets really cold. The next area that we're going to tear out is this area. This is my squash area and they did miserably this year. Um, you can see I got one, two, three, four spaghetti squash off five vines. Well, actually I had another spaghetti squash that's, that I already ate. These are ready to harvest and we're just going to tear them out. We just barely, we just barely started getting butternut squash, so I might leave those and see if those will mature before the fall freeze. And then in another video, not the next one, but another one, we're going to put up three more vajega beds. I'm going to figure out how to fit them into this area. And I think the squash are going to do better when they're growing above ground. Now this is the main area that we're going to be working on. We're going to take out and I, I think I'm still going to stick with the fact that we're going to take out all of these strawberries. These strawberries did not produce well at all. Hardly at all. I mean, I, I almost, I pretty much got nothing out of this strawberry bed. And I do need more actual garden space. And I have strawberries other places in my yard right now. So I think we're going to take all the strawberries out of here. We'll probably leave the zinnias until the frost kills them. We're going to take out the rest of the squash. They just are not producing well at all and they pretty much died back from powdering mildew. They're done. We're going to harvest some of my stevia and dry that. My jalapenos are finally producing. We have a ton of peppers in the freezer. So, but I may leave these just so that they can get a little bit bigger. We'll leave the sun sugar tomato until it's, until it freezes to the ground. And we'll also leave the zinnias and the, and the board so the bees have something. We have several bags of banana peppers in the refrigerator that I don't know what to do with. And we have 24 pints of pickled peppers. So the, 
the banana peppers are definitely coming out. We'll probably leave the Thai basil, definitely leave the marigolds, and absolutely leave the, the Swiss chard in here. I think this bed may end up being my garlic bed. So once we have our first freeze and everything in here dies, I will harvest everything out of this bed and then plant the garlic. Now maybe you'll see it as I walk. Look at that. I don't know if you could see it all. Look at these guys. I have hordes of grasshoppers that are eating just about everything. These are my fall crops. We've got cabbage that are starting to head up. We've got kohlrabi that's starting to gain a little size, a little bit of chijimisai, and some kale. And the grasshoppers are feasting on these, but they haven't done enough damage for me to think I need to pull them out yet. So we'll see what happens. Cucumbers are done. We have 24 pints of pickles and we have tons of dried cucumbers. So, and I have no more use for cucumbers. I've got another full bag in the refrigerator that I'm trying to eat. So these are gonna come out. And this will be one of my winter beds. So I'm gonna plant some of the cabbage in here. So here's another bed that's gonna be a winter bed. And look what the grasshoppers have done to my to my carrots. I finally got carrots to grow and they've just decimated them. They've eaten the tops off all of them. They ate every single last beet that I planted so I'm not getting any beets at all, not even one. The peas were planted in July, the end of July, and it just was so hot for them that they're not growing that well. So I think I'm gonna tear out the peas. I'll probably see if I can let the carrots try and recover but I'm gonna be planting some cabbage and kale and uh, kohlrabi in this bed. The grasshoppers are decimating my cauliflower. So I don't know if the cauliflower is gonna be able to head up at all. We'll see. And then these are my Chinese mountain yams. I, I'll put the scientific name up on the screen but we've finally been able to get them to start developing some of the little seed pods. Now these are edible. They're not ready yet. They're gonna increase in size, but we can use these to plant for next year. So these will be harvested once we get closer to the, the first freeze. We'll probably harvest them right after the first frost and see what they look like. And we're gonna harvest the underground tubers of these. They've been in ground for two years so far. So. That's what we're gonna try to do. I'm just gonna set up my camera, start tearing stuff out as fast as we can and see how far we get. Now, one last thing before I start tearing stuff out. I normally compost just about everything, but this year we've had so many diseases and so many pests that I think we're just gonna throw everything away. The cucumbers harbor, harbor squash bugs and powdery mildew. The squash definitely needs to, can, Squash definitely can't be composted. It's got a ton of powdery mildew and it's got squash bugs. You know, the tomatoes have had a lot of disease this year. So I think we're gonna just throw everything away just so that we don't spread any more of that disease for next year. Well, we got most of it done and my camera's about ready to die. So let me go show you what I've done and then we'll see you in the next video for planting our winter crops. We were able to completely clear out this bed and I'm a little bit worried because I found probably a dozen shoots of this maypop in this bed. 
I may have to dismantle it, pull it apart, and then put weed barrier down beneath it so that we don't get that happening. Now I didn't get the strawberries finished because my wheelbarrow is full and my trash can is full, but tomorrow's trash day, so tomorrow I'll finish that and let me show you what I did get done. So strawberries will get pulled tomorrow. We were able to pull everything but this squash vine out. This squash vine had a few little baby squash on it, so I decided to let it, so I decided to leave it a couple of days and let those mature. Peppers are all gone out of this bed. And this bed is cleared and ready for winter crops. And here's what we harvested off of everything. We got our cu cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, pepita squash, and spaghetti squash. Now I'd love to hear what you're doing with your gardens. Are you taking down your summer gardens? Are you almost done? Are you gonna be growing over the winter? If so, how do you grow over the winter? If you're in a colder climate, do you use hoop houses? What do you do? Well, I'm interested to hear that. And if my videos are helpful to you, please like, subscribe, share them with your friends. Go have a wonderful garden adventure and we'll see you in the next video.